So welcome back to the channel and as you can see I got an open hood behind me and we got a Mercedes GL 350 with the Black Death. You can see it right here. Three and four, two and three, whatever it is. Those two cylinders have the Black Death. There's, a, there's an advantage to warming up your engine before you take this apart because then everything's soft. But I don't have that advantage right now, so we're just going to work with what we got and see if we can take this apart and get it fixed. So come along for the ride and let's do some learning together. Already got that loosened off. Ooh, look at that gunk down there. Move a little bit. Let's see, got any luck? Oh, it's moving. Oh, look at that tar. Oh wow, look, it's like actually like gooey. Now that last one, it's gonna be harder to get at, but let's see if we can. So if we look on both sides, that side looks okay. That side looks okay, okay too. So let's look at the two injectors. So here you can see it's like grubby from the bottom up. I think this one was coming, it was leaking down into that one, from this one into this one. Oh, I got it now. Ah, look at that. Copper washer, beauty. So on this washer, you can definitely see the difference. But then the other side, that one still looks pretty good. You can see it's leaking. So that definitely was the bad one. So we got a new one. Actually, we got the Honda Accord crush washer. Supposedly they're better. So the next job is cleaning, and then I'll tell you what I did to clean it up. And maybe show you a little as well. But let's make this look like this. All right, so after a lot of scrubbing, it's a lot cleaner. It's still... Uh, a bit more to do, but it definitely is cleaner. I also bought this kit with wire brushes to clean the tubes a bit. I'm gonna have to put a washer down there to cover up the bottom and we'll vacuum it out and then we'll cut the seats. So let's do a bit more cleaning. Uh, I have the injectors right now. They are soaking in gas. I don't know if that's gonna help, but we'll see. What's been the main thing that I've cleaned it with is a carb cleaner, toothbrush, it would be worth it to have a wire toothbrush because that seems to work a little better. So my heavy handedness of removing the low pressure return fuel line, you can see right there, it's cracked and this one has a tiny crack, not as bad. And when I was turning it over, I could see some fuel spitting out. So I'm gonna use a bit of JB Weld and see if I can't fix that. But you can kind of see it's a bit of grime in there. There's something called a, a seat grinder or cutter. And I believe, for Mercedes, you could just confirm for yourself, but you need the 15 by 19 mil. Um, and basically you put it in and you spin it around and it's just basically, it'll scrape off any of the, the carbon that's built up. And then also what you want to use is something like this, LubriCut, basically a wax. So what this does is as you cut, if you get any steel shavings, they'll stick to the wax and they'll come out. You don't want them falling in the cylinder, obviously. So. Okay, so now you can see the injector seat. Of course, it's not going to focus, but you can see it's much cleaner. So you also got to tap the holes where the screws go in that hold the injectors down. So it's an M6 one. The pitch, the thread pitch is one and it's M6. So I'm doing that right now. So here's some of the black gunk I got from the tap. So make sure you clean the threads. So because my tap tool couldn't go far enough in, I'm going to show you another way to make your own. So if you take your Dremel and you just cut a line along here, you can basically use this, this old uh, screw as a tap tool. So this is one of the old ones. I wire brushed it clean and now I'm just going to cut a, a line in it with this Dremel tool. And you can see I cut a line, line right along there and now we'll turn this in and I'll show you how much gunk this gets out. 
If you don't have a tap, this is another way to clean out the uh, thread. So what you do is you run this into the hole, pull it out, there'll be all gunk in that line, clean it out and repeat that until this thing comes out clean. So then to clean the holes out because there's gunk in there, like kind of liquid, what I did was I, I took a straw from a carb cleaner clan and I taped it to my air blower. And then this will fit right in, right deep into the threaded hole and I'll blow and you'll see probably stuff coming out. Let's see. And the importance of this is that so when you thread it in, you're going to get the right torque settings. Because if you don't, the injector's not going to have enough force on the crush washer and you're going to end up getting a leak again, which would really not be fun. Okay, so it's time to put the injectors back in. What we have here is we have a Honda injector, part number, and a Mercedes. And actually, Mercedes is thinner. And supposedly the Honda copper is a little bit softer and supposedly they're better. So I'm going to go with that. Other people have been doing that. This is the Mercedes, about six thousandths, it's about nine. Definitely is thicker. So we're gonna give these a try. And here's the finished JB Weld repair I did on both of them. Here's the other one. It's just the return, so it's low pressure. Maybe it's 50 PSI, 30 PSI. So I feel like it should be fine. I also have, um, comes with a new bolts, the washers and also O-rings. So I'm just gonna clip new O-rings on these two injectors. Pinch it carefully, pull it out and over. Okay, well, let's get these on and we'll see if they're leaking and see if this uh, repair that we did was, was a good job. So one other thing I did was I, t I pulled the fuse, um, which is under the back seat, for the fuel pump and then i turn it over three or four times just to blow out any carb cleaner that leaked down into the cylinder under the back seat you can always find uh, the paper fuel pump right there 112 and 132 now there's nothing by 132 on this car flip it over oh why do germans make everything so complicated f132 which is that one right there because you're putting it on at an angle, it won't necessarily fall down on you. Well, with my luck, it will. Ah! <laughs> Anyways, I should be able to just straighten that out in there. There we go. And then get this in. Should be putting this in at the same time. The other thing is don't forget to grease your injectors, the sides before you put them in. Even like an anti-copper seat should be fine. And here it is greased up. Next, we're gonna torque these down to seven nanometers or it's about 62 inch pounds. And these are stretched to yield. So after you do that, you do another 90 and another 90. What that does is that kind of is a preset amount of torque and that will bring it to about 190 inch pounds. That's not very much. Try it again. That feels like nothing, but anyways. All right, so now we got to go another 90 degrees from here to straight up. Oh yeah, now I can really feel it getting tight. That's 90 and let's do another 20, 25 or so. Yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to snap that. And then this as well, we'll get to 90 right here. Definitely feel it tightens right up. That's 90 and maybe just a little more. All right, that's all I'm doing. And I'm gonna have someone try start this. I'm just gonna see if we're getting any puffs out of here because that was the, uh, the symptoms. All right, my trusty helper. All right, stop. No puffing at all, which is great. So while I'm in the engine, I'm gonna change out the rest of the gaskets, the copper gaskets on the other injectors. Uh, one more here and three more here, just because I have them and to hopefully keep it happening for on the other injectors. So let's roll a time-lapse while I do that.
Okay, so all injector uh, copper seals have been changed. The rubber O-rings have been changed. It's all torqued to spec. Fuse for the fuel pump is in. So let's prime this. Uh, a little nervous here. But let's prime it and see what happens. We'll do it a couple times. You should prime it a couple times in theory. So I won't put my, don't put your foot on the brake, just hit it. Hit it again. There you go. Hearing it priming, let's look for any wetness. Looks like it should be ready to start. Let's give it a try. Nope. Okay, so it's running. I plugged everything else in. Sounds okay. Um, looking for anything. It took quite a bit of turning over. So that's because this line was new, fuel filter was new, injectors are all out and cleaned out and drained. So, sounds pretty good now. I'm very happy with that. I thought, oh dear, we have some electrical issue, but it seems okay now. No leaking, no blow-by, this is great. I may have to reset the computer, but let's button this thing back up and then we can take it for a test drive. I am very happy with it. So to give you an idea of how bad the Black Death is, this is the one um, air intake part, and you can see it's just like it was leaking out and it's even melting this a little bit, that nasty stuff. So it's definitely worth, um, when you do an oil change, it might be worth just to take off your intake take the foam off because I couldn't see it because the foam that was covering it and then you get a good idea if it's uh, actually leaking and having issues. Well I hope the video was useful. We took it for a spin and everything's running good. No more leaking, no more black goo or combustion uh, leaking past the seals. So we'll call this successful. I hope this was useful. Enjoyed it and please give a thumbs up, subscribe and we'll see you on the next one.